Good day everybody, Yannick here for Yannick Photo School on another video tutorial in Photoshop CS3. Today we're going to be looking at changing an object's color. I'm going to show you three different ways of doing this because there's always uh, many ways of uh, doing things in Photoshop. So I want to show you three. There are probably even more. Um, I know there are some ways by using masks and whatnot, but I'm going to show you really, really quick and basic ways of doing it so that you don't have to fiddle around too long. Now, the first one that I'll show you is the hue saturation slider. Um, what you need to do now is to go into image, adjustments, hue saturation. You can always use control U as a shortcut to get there. And your dialog box appears. Now let's go through this dialog box if you've never used a hue saturation or you're, you're not sure exactly how it works. Um, the first box that we see here is the drop down menu. When master is selected, which is default, it will affect all the colors on the whole image. What we need to do to, to uh, change a specific color is to select a channel, a color channel from the bar here. Um, and we'll get to that in a minute. Now, the three sliders that we see here, we'll actually be using mostly the top two, um, and especially in this tutorial, the first one, which is to change the hue or the color of, a, uh, of an object. So we'll be using that. We might saturate or desaturate after we've done the, the first uh, hue change. And we won't be really touching at lightness and brightness uh, here uh, on that slider. Now, what I want to bring your attention to right now is the uh, rainbowed bars here. Um, this is basically all your color ranges um, for, for, um, th for this image, actually for all images. So this is the whole gamut of colors. When the master is selected, um, as you can see, um, there's nothing that indicates specific color ranges. Now, Pay attention here just a second. I'm going into the red channel. Oops, look what happens in that color bar. A gr dark gray bar right in the middle here appears, and it tells you this is the range that will be affected by the changes that you'll be making. And this is the feathering out um, so that it has a smooth transition into the colors. So it's feathering out into the oranges on one side and into the magentas on the other. Now, what's great about this is that you can manually adjust that. First of all, by clicking on the, the dark bar, you can slide the whole thing one way or another. Or if you click on the, the edges of the bar, you can increase your range, your color range. And also, by clicking on the tabs here, you can increase your feathering to give you even more detail. Now, I've done this for, for, for this object. What we'll be doing is changing the heart color. And uh, let's just see how it does. Let's pretend it's St. Patrick's Day and we want a green heart here. So which way are we going to go? That's the magenta way. So we want to go the other way. We're getting into oranges, yellows. Oh, we're getting some greens here. And that's a nice shade of green that I like. Now you want to make sure that almost all the reds here are affected. I can see that some of the shadowing here isn't affected. I can click on my shift key and you'll see a plus sign appear beside the eyedropper and I'm going to go click into that shadow to get all the red out. And there you go. Now I have a nice a green heart for St. Potty's Day. And that's number one. Now I'll cancel this and I'll show you the second way of doing this. Again, into Adjustments, we'll go down to Selective Color. This dialog box appears, and you have all your colors here. Now, I'm showing you this, this, this way, Selective Color. Um, I don't use it often unless it's a really, really specific color without too much um, uh, gradient in it. Um, as you, you'll see here, when I play with my reds and I go to one way or another, um, when it comes into the shadows or the reflective area here, it doesn't do the, the hue 
justice. It doesn't give it a nice feel to it. It's not as precise as we would want it to be. So this example isn't great um, for, for this object. So you really need an object with a very specific or very short range of colors. So a really, really red image or uh, without um, any gradients in it. So that's number two. Uh, one of my favorite ones that I like to use, again in adjustments, it's called replace color. Um, it's very similar to the hue saturation, uh, but what it gives you, it actually gives you an image, a visual image of uh, what you'll be uh, changing. Now again, with my eyedropper, I'm going to click on my on my heart, and as you, as you can see, something appears here, and the white indicates what will be changed. Now, if I want to add to that, I can just use my shift key again, and the plus sign appears on my eyedropper, and I can just select in my heart, or you can select right on the images here, exactly which colors you want affected by this, the replace color. So I'm going right into the images. I'm going into the uh, I'm going right into the shadow here onto the reflection and as you can see you can see the reflection here and everything now fuzziness is again a bit like the feathering in the uh, hue saturation slider so it gives you some range you can see by increasing or decreasing it how the whites and the uh, the grays are there so I just want the heart and some of the shadows to be there so fuzziness of around 40 for this image for now is good now let's use the uh, the sliders here which are the exact same ones as in the hue saturation dialog box so I want the green heart so I'm going to move it this way and there's our shade of green now looking at this image the uh, all the reds seem to be out except for part of the reflection here so by clicking on my shift key I'm going to click on it and voila that's simple all of our reds are now greens and that's basically how you replace uh, a color um, or change an object's color in Photoshop. Three different ways of doing it. There are a lot more. If you know of some more, feel free to post them in the comments. It's good for everyone. Again, Yannick here for Yannick's Photo School, signing off, and see you next time. Bye-bye.